Good morning, Monday, the 13th day of July, 2020. I'm Vincent J. Russo of the Russo Law Group, here along with my son, Robert Russo. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. On June 15th, there was a landmark decision rendered for the LGBTQ community. And so, Robert, talk to us about that decision. Yeah, uh, well, the Supreme Court in a 6-3 decision uh, ruled that uh, Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, uh, which prohibits employment discrimination on the basis of sex, uh, also prohibits such discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. Uh, so it's a landmark ruling uh, on the civil rights front for employment discrimination. Uh, the cases themselves, uh, there were two sets of cases, one, um, or rather two of them involving gay men who had been fired from their jobs after, in one case, uh, one of them joined a gay softball league and in another uh, told a customer that he was gay and was fired. And then the, the second um, set of cases involved um, an employee in Michigan at a funeral home who uh, was just transgender and informed her place of employment that she was transgender and would start uh, wearing women's clothing and was then fired. So um, those are the, the cases that, that were before the Supreme Court and they, uh, they ruled uh, expanding the definition of uh, discrimination on the basis of sex. And it, and it took a long time, the process to get to the U.S. Supreme yeah, well, Court, it's always, years and yeah, years. And, it's and so when you were in law school, uh, you were connected to this issue. Yeah, well, yeah, well at least the concept. Yeah, yeah. yeah my, my first year of law school back in 2010, um, our uh, semester-long uh, legal research and writing class uh, problem, a hypothetical case that we considered um, and researched and wrote briefs on and did oral arguments for was this very question of whether or not uh, Title VII would extend to protection for transgender Americans in particular in that, in that hypothetical. So, yeah. So share with us why you think the decision is important. Yeah, well, it's a big, you know, it's a big decision on the civil rights front um, because on the day that this decision was handed down in more than half of the states in the, across the country, you could be fired for being gay, bisexual, or transgender. Um, so now that is no longer the case. Um, Fantastic. Across the board, uh, LGBTQ employees are protected on that basis. Um, and so it represents a major milestone for um, civil rights uh, rights and litigation. Um, and it's also the first time that this, the Supreme Court has considered transgender rights in a major case. Uh, so that makes it a landmark um, on, that, on that ground. And then also, you know, it just uh, speaks to our separation of powers um, because it arrives in a moment where uh, the court, uh, as the uh, judicial branch, is asserting um, its own um, uh, power um, in, in a, in a spe specifically in an area where Congress has failed to act and the executive branch has been sort of hostile towards the extension of these rights. So it fits a pattern, this term in particular, of the Chief Justice uh, who joined uh, the majority in 51 of 53 cases. Uh, making a very clear statement about politicization of the court and also the court's uh, independence. Yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised uh, that it was a 6-3 decision yes. and the decision was written by uh, Gorsuch, Gorsuch. In, the right. in the majority. So mm -hmm. that was a, yeah. a real surprise. A real surprise. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what did the decision not deal with? Mm. That's a great question. Yeah. So uh, first of all, it's a case, um, it's, it's a ruling rather that has to deal with uh, statutory interpretation, not constitutional law. So as a matter of statutory interpretation, they were looking at this very specific clause um, in, in the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So there's no sort of sweeping constitutional right that has been espoused here. It is merely a, a, an issue of interpretation, um, which means, of course, that it's very narrow. So it's a very narrow ruling that has to do specifically with employment discrimination. So it's not touching other areas of life, whether it's education or healthcare or any other areas where someone might face discrimination. This was purely about um, employment discrimination. So we're likely going to see a whole lot more litigation oh, yes. on yes. these issues. For sure. um, but now we have a case that one can point to Correct. Um, as, as a kind of the foundation for further decisions. Yeah. yeah. So um, what are your hopes at this point? Well, um, you know, my hopes are that we will see that litigation and we'll see, you know, greater progress for um, the protection of rights for the LGBTQ community in America. Um, you know, as you just mentioned, this now establishes a precedent, um, you know, in the context of gay and lesbian Americans, they had to face many setbacks at the Supreme Court at the highest level um, before, um, you know, in 97 with the Lawrence v. Texas decision or Obergefell in 2015. Um, those were both undoing prior, um, you know, precedents. So 
for this first major case addressing transgender rights to come out so positively lays a really good legal framework for ruling uh, by analogy in other areas of life, mm -hmm. whether it's healthcare or education or banking or housing, other areas where people face yeah. discrimination. And it's just, you know, at this time, uh, with everything else that's going on, and we talk about equality mm -hmm. and freedom, yeah. and it just seems that people should be able to be their true colors and mm -hmm. be who they are, and we should all be treated equally in the eyes of the law. Yes, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, hopefully the, the path has been set uh, yeah. for, for future decisions. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah, this was fun. For the update. Uh, and everyone, have a great day today and be safe.